Hey there, I'm here today to make a quick review for the book Black Leopard Red Wolf by Marlon James. This is the first book in an epic fantasy trilogy and it has definitely been one of the most hyped releases so far in 2019. There's a lot of buzz surrounding this book. I'm sure a lot of you have been hearing the African Game of Thrones pitch that has been surrounding this book and I feel like I don't want to contribute to like the, the mindless cloud of hype surrounding this book but at the same time I want to be upfront with you at the start of this review just where I'm coming from as a reader and that I'm just a really big fan of Marlon James and all of his books. So I'm not going to be the most objective reviewer. If you are someone who wants a really unbiased opinion of whether this is a good or bad piece of literature, I'm not going to be that person. I've been excited about this project ever since Marlon James started posting about it on Facebook, how he was working on a fantasy project and he was really going to let his inner nerd out and he was just going to go hard into all the geeky aspects of fantasy that we all love. So I've been anticipating this for a long time. I went into this book expecting to love it and that's exactly what happened. So it definitely calls my objectivity into question but I still wanted to make a video sharing my thoughts and it's not just all gonna be like glowing praise and I do want to discuss what kind of reader is going to enjoy this book because I don't think it's one that's going to please everyone obviously. I think any kind of book that is stylistically ambitious is not going to suit everyone so I want to talk about what kind of readers I think are gonna love this book versus what ones maybe are going to find it a frustrating experience. To start off I wanted to explore where Black Leopard Red Wolf fits in with Marlon James's previous novels because part of the reason that this book is making such a splash is that Marlon James is diving deep into the world of epic fantasy which is confusing for some people who view Marlon James as a literary author and he has this reputation because a few years ago he won the Man Booker Prize for this novel A Brief History of Seven Killings and of course the Man Booker Prize is one of those like esteemed literary prizes so some people are thinking it's a bit of a noteworthy move for an author who has just established himself in the literary community to then move away with his next project into the world of genre fiction. But actually Marlon James had been working on Black Leopard Red Wolf before he ever found out that he won the Man Booker Prize. So it was something that he was going to go ahead with regardless of how people were going to interpret that move. And if you know Marlon James's back catalog, you'll know that he's not an author who's really afraid of this so-called divide between literary fiction and genre fiction. If you read some interviews with him, he talks about his childhood and how he was a very omnivorous reader and he would basically pick up anything that he could get his hands on and he wasn't worried about whether those books were considered to be good or highbrow or whether they were supposed to be trashy and lowbrow. He just enjoyed stories so he would consume as many as he could, whether those would be Archie comics or 100 Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. It was kind of all the same. And you can really see that playful sense in his writing. He is not going to be constricted by literary or genre. He's not even going to constrain himself to just one type of genre. If you look at each of his projects, they're all really exploring different types of fiction. You've got his first novel, John Crow's Devil, which is about a small town drama that also features a lot of horror and supernatural events. Then you've got his second novel, The Book of Night Women, which is historical fiction, but much more gritty and intense than you've probably ever seen historical fiction before. So I feel like this book really turns that genre upside down and makes you see history in a much different light. Then of course you have A Brief History of Seven Killings, which again takes historical elements when it describes the attempted assassination on the life of Bob Marley, but is really playing with this novel in kind of a mashup of crime fiction and William Faulkner's As I Lay Dying. So it again is that kind of contrast of like high literary style with like really gruesome, violent, action-based plot. That then takes us to Black Leopard Red Wolf, which once you've looked at his pattern of playing with genre and mixing it with literary conventions, makes Black Leopard Red Wolf a really logical next step 
in his progression as a writer. And it's one that I think he pulls off really well. He takes everything that's fun about genre fiction. He takes those fast moving plots and action and intensity and good storytelling, but then he mixes it with these literary conventions that play with style and that make you really think as a reader in a way that I think is really satisfying and fresh. So at the heart of Black Leopard Red Wolf, there was like a really deeply conventional fantasy plot buried in here. So there is a story that most fantasy readers can recognize, but the difference is that, again, it is like deeply buried and there are lots of other strange distortions that are surrounding it that make it difficult to access that conventional narrative. And that's why I found this novel to be a lot of fun because he's not really handing you the story in a conventional way, rather you are constantly searching for it just like the characters themselves in this story. And that's where I think the real literary side of this novel is in that it's just as much about how the story is constructed and narrated to the reader as as much as it is about what actually happens in the story. Those are kind of equal components of this book. The way I imagine it is that this book is a demented funhouse where you as the reader are thrown into this shadowy hallway and you're trying to make your way out despite all of the twists and turns and dead ends and all of these mirrors that are completely distorting reality where you are just surrounded by so many illusions that you don't know which direction to go in. And that's where it's really important to know yourself as a reader. Are you the kind of person who enjoys being lost in those kind of deceptions and distortions? Do you enjoy trying to sift through the experiences and try to construct your own vision of reality? Or are you someone who finds that to be a deeply pointless and frustrating experience? You kind of have to know what you're looking for in a book because while this book does have its fun and intense moments, most of the time it is really just you grow in the dark trying to figure out what the heck is going on. So for a reader who is looking for more of a plot-centered experience, this is going to be a deeply frustrating experience. And I think that's kind of the problem with this book being marketed as this African Game of Thrones. If you go into this expecting it to be a straight-up fantasy story, then I think that that's kind of selling this book short and what it's trying to do. And it might disappoint readers who find this book to not be very accessible or linear. Also, I think it's easier for us to compare this to Game of Thrones, but it's also interesting to explore what we mean by African because Marlon James did a lot of research before going into this book and he read a lot about West African history and mythology and you can see how he's incorporated that not just in the content of his fantasy world but in the way that he is telling the story because the oral tradition of storytelling is very important in many West African cultures and in an oral storytelling tradition you never get the same story twice and you realize that there is no one thing that happened, there's no one truth. Each storyteller is going to put their own spin on the story that they're telling and that doesn't mean that one story is more or less true depending on who's telling it. So I think you can see that idea played with here as well. The idea that we're going to be getting this same story from different perspectives throughout the two other books yet to come in this trilogy. And with some authors, that premise would concern me because you don't want this series to be repetitive. No one wants to be told the same story three times in a row. But I do have a lot of faith in Marlon James's ability as a writer. I think each of these three retellings are going to be so radically different from each other that it's not going to feel too repetitive. And rather, each book is just going to call into question everything that happened in the other one to the point where I don't think that there's really going to be ever a definitive here is what happens. It's always going to be a bit shaky and unsteady depending on whose voice we're interacting with. So that kind of project really excites me. I think it's really cool how this book delivers on a lot of your expectations for what a fantasy novel should be, and yet it subverts a lot of those expectations in other ways. So, you know, we expect epic fantasy to be these very long stories that are told in series or trilogies, and yes, Marlon James is giving us a trilogy, but no, he's not structuring it in the way that we'd expect him to. In a trilogy, the first book is usually the one that is just setting up the foundation for what the story is going to be and introducing you to the main players. In book number one of Marlon James's trilogy, he has given you the whole story through to its very end. The other two books are not going to be continuing that story, but rather giving us a different interpretation of the same story of book one. 
Another thing that he does is he takes the convention of a quest novel. So in some ways, this is very traditional, right? The main character is a man named Tracker. He's blessed with this really strong sense of smell, and he has been hired in order to find this lost child. So it is about this man on a quest. He's looking for this kid. He is joined up with a team. So like in fantasy, you kind of have this fellowship element of all these people on this quest together. But then where this subverts that idea of the quest is that, first of all, we are given so much confusing, contradicting information about what this quest even is and why we're trying to find this boy and why he's important. So a lot of that story is shifting, especially the motivations of each of the people that are in this fellowship party. So the idea of this quest is kind of always changing and shifting and developing on us. And also it's just very strange that the quest is then completed in the first book of the trilogy. Of course not in a way that you're expecting it to be, but still the story kind of wraps itself up at a place where you're not really expecting it to in the narrative. So I like how Marlon James is giving us some things that we expect to see in a fantasy world, but then he's also throwing a major wrench into our expectations multiple times throughout this book. Ultimately though, my favorite aspect about this book is the way that it could just set my imagination on fire. And that's what I truly value in literature and in fantasy in particular. I love how an author can create this world that you've never seen before and set you in the middle of it and yet by the end of a book you really feel like it's a world that like you know and can recognize. So I thought that that was really cool. One of my favorite places was a place called the Borderlands and it's kind of this like in-between zone where you are deeply tapping into what's going on in your subconscious. So it's kind of like these like dark woods where again you're not really sure what's really happening. You lose track of time. You might get stuck in there forever. And there are of course all these kind of spooky creatures running around and wreaking havoc. One of the things that I really liked in this book is that for me usually the most boring part of the fantasy book is the like getting there part where characters have to get from place A to place B and they're usually walking on foot and it takes a lot of time and it really slows down the plot. In this world there is this system of magical doors where characters can access them and use it to basically teleport themselves to different locations and I thought that that was a really smart feature because that eliminates all of those like boring travel scenes so it kind of did just jump you from one setting to the next so I liked all of the settings. You can see that Marlon James is not kidding around because there are a lot of maps peppered throughout this book so like this is like a fully realized place and it was just a delight to travel from city to city. There was also this this, like interesting tension between the civilized cities and the more rural villages and the people in the villages are following these superstitious traditions that a lot of the more like educated city people will then look down at them from that so you can kind of see these like different hierarchies that are existing in the society and also at the end of the book you kind of get some hints dropped about the future of Africa where you have this like specter of European colonialism hanging Hanging in the horizon in a really ominous way. So I liked how it was kind of recognizably Africa but also in a way that we've just never seen it before with lots of cool made-up places. Another thing that I also loved about this world were the characters. There were so many cool characters in this book that I grew <laughs> very attached to which you know no spoilers but like <laughs> it is really dangerous to get attached to characters in this world that you know is so violent and you know that no one is safe in this kind of story but yeah even though I knew that I shouldn't, I still kind of formed some attachments to these characters. There's a really cute band of misfit children who have been abandoned by villagers who think that they are cursed in some way. They were really cute. There is one boy who's called Ball Boy who is like super round and he just rolls around on the ground and I was really fond of him. And then there's also some people in like the fellowship that are really cool. There's a buffalo who doesn't talk and yet is just oozing with personality and I don't really know how Marlon James accomplished that. There's also a character who's a giant, Sadogo, and people think that he's supposed to be this like tough, strong, silent guy but he's actually just like really chatty and in his feels a lot so he was a great character. And I also really liked the creepy evil creations in this book as well. I really like that about fantasy when people go into the dark side there are these mythical shadowy beings that come to attack you from the ceiling. So like they walk on the ceiling like it's the floor. So if you want to get away from them, you have to get outside. So I thought those guys were pretty cool and creepy. There's also this evil vampiric lightning bird and these strange little 
spider brothers. So there's a lot happening in this book. So if you just like imagining strange creatures doing strange things, then I think that you'll get a kick out of this book because I know that I certainly did. Another aspect about this novel that I enjoyed is just how much queerness there is running throughout the narrative. And I think it's interesting that as this book is being marketed, people are really focusing on the diversity of the story in that it's set in Africa and is using African storytelling techniques and mythology to enrich this world because there's kind of this pushback going on in the fantasy genre as well as some other ones that um, for too long it has kind of been this like historically like European kind of male world and you can see that readers today are looking for more diverse representation in the books that they're reading. There shouldn't be any kind of like default experience that you see again and again. So I think that's part of the reason why this book is becoming very popular in that if people are looking for fantasy novels that are set in different parts of the world, this will definitely fulfill that. But also I think it's valuable how queerness is so prominent in this story, especially since fantasy kind of has this reputation of being like very masculine. I like how this novel explores queerness, especially in relation to African history or how it might have been interpreted or accepted in different communities and cultures. The narrator of the story, Tracker, has a hard time reconciling with his queerness and his masculinity. To him, he thinks that there's almost something wrong with him and that there's like a physical reason that can explain why he is the way he is. I also really appreciated the scene where Mossy calls out Tracker on his misogynistic thought patterns. So it's kind of pointing out how there sometimes is misogyny or femphobia in gay communities. So you can see how queerness is really complicated for a lot of these characters. It seems realistic to me that these characters are not all just progressive and accepting of everything, but rather they each have their own shortcomings or limitations in what they're willing to accept and some of them need to challenge those beliefs and work towards seeing things differently. So I thought that that was realistic. It kind of shows us how each of us have our own prejudices or limitations and we should work on that and hopefully we'll be lucky enough to have a friend like Mossy who can kind of call you on that and help you see the world a bit differently. So I did like that about the characters. They do feel rounded in that way. Now in some ways the characters seem distant because we only see them from Tracker's perspective. So I think our understanding of the characters are going to shift as we see them through other people's eyes. So I think there are some characters that we just don't get full access to because Tracker doesn't understand them. And you can see that particularly with the female characters in this. They do seem to be somewhat removed, whereas you get a more complete picture of characters that Tracker has spent more time with, like Leopard or with Mossy. So characterization isn't perfect in this book, can definitely be murky at times. But at the same time, I do appreciate that these characters are complex. They do have their moments of strength and courage, but also their moments of moral ambiguity or like shortcomings or they are not all just great people doing great things. Everyone in this book has a dark side. Now, some of the characters in this book go well beyond morally ambiguous territory and there are some terrible people doing some pretty terrible things to other people. So that is something to keep in mind with this book. Everyone describes it as violent, but I'm not sure if that will prepare you for just how much violence there can be. Because when you're thinking of fantasy, you might think like violence is like cool fighting moves where characters are like whipping out two swords and getting into fun battles because there is some of that too. But then there's also the other kind of like, terrible, abusive situation where people are misusing their power in some pretty heinous ways. So that's something to keep in mind if you're squeamish as a reader. Like there are just a lot of pretty terrible things that are happening throughout this book and some of it can be pretty disturbing. Not gonna lie, there is a scene in here involving hyenas which I am still like disturbed to my core when I think about it. So keep that in mind if you are ready as a reader to go into this very dark headspace. And on that depressing note, that's where I'm gonna wrap up this review of Black Leopard, Red Wolf. So in my opinion, I really enjoyed myself reading this book. I thought it was a very imaginative fantasy world unlike anything I had ever experienced before. I also really enjoyed how Marlon James is constructing this narrative and calling truth into question. But I can also appreciate for readers who have different tastes from my own, this novel can be way too graphic and explicit. And also the story can be convoluted and frustrating if you're looking for more of a straightforward plot. So definitely not like 
the perfect reading experience for everyone, but I thought that this novel was brilliant and I'm glad that he gave it a shot. And I can't wait to see where Marlon James is going to take this trilogy. That's ultimately how I know that I liked this because I just can't wait to go back into this world and to be immersed into this crazy confusing story again. So those are my thoughts on Black Leopard Red Wolf. If you have read this book I would love to know what you thought about this one and if you haven't read it yet I hope that you'll consider giving it a go if you think it might check some of your boxes. That's all I've got for you today and I'll see you again later.